Welcome to video 12 in the CCT data center course. Uh, in this video, we are going to describe SFP and QSFP. Topics covered in this video include the SFP basics, multi-mode versus single mode fiber, uh, SFPs, including the SFP, SFP plus, SFP 28, and the SFP double D. Uh, QSFPs, including the QSFP, QSFP plus, QSFP 28, and the QSFP DD. We're gonna, we're gonna discuss the concept of backwards compatibility and how it works with these transceivers. And lastly, we're gonna go over the TMG matrix. All right, SFP basics include, uh, SFP stands for small form factor pluggable. QSFP stands for quad small form factor pluggable. Uh, both of these optical transceivers are hot pluggable, which means you do not need to power down the equipment that you're plugging them into in order to plug them in. Uh, the other concept here is that SFP and QSFP are different form factors. Uh, this means that they have completely different sizes in the, the switches that you're plugging them into. You cannot uh, plug an SFP into a QSFP slot, and you cannot plug a QSFP into an SFP slot. We did touch on multi-mode versus single mode in a previous video, but we're going to do it again just briefly here. So multi-mode is used for shorter distances. Uh, the main concept is that it has a larger core, as you can see this, uh, this red thing here, uh, and the multiple signals at a time can traverse through it and they bounce off of the sides of that core. And as a result, each time it hits the side of the core, the signal is uh, diminished a little bit and that's why you can only use multi-mode for short distances. Single mode, used for longer distances, has a much smaller core but it sends one, uh, one stream through at a time and it does not reflect off of the sides. All right, so SFP speeds. Um, if you're unfamiliar with these optical transceivers like I was until just recently, you, it's really helpful to understand what each of the abbreviations means in terms of speed. That way you can look at the name of a transceiver and know immediately how fast that transceiver goes. Uh, so here I have them specified. Uh, one gig is really where the SFP started. So one gig is SFP, 10 gig is SFP plus, 25 gig is SFP 28, and 100 gig is SFP double D. All right, so like we just said, SFP is the one gigabit per second standard. Now we're gonna look at this in a little bit more detail when we go and look at the data sheets, but you can really get a lot of different lengths with an SFP form factor. It's there's nothing that's easy or standard about it uh, between optical transceivers and then the different types of fiber. What I'm trying to convey is that you need to consult the documentation every time. So here, uh, just as an example for the one gigabit standard, you have SX cables that can go a maximum of uh, 550 meters uh, for multi-mode fiber and then on single mode fiber you have the LX, EX, and ZX uh, each of which represents or is meant to convey a different max distance that you can go. Uh, so LX has 10 km, uh, 10 kilometers, uh, EX has 40 kilometers, and ZX has 70 kilometers depending on other specifics. Okay, so this last bullet here um, I have Google uh, Cisco 1 gig SFP and that will take you to the data sheets, which, which brings up another concept that I wanted to touch on. Uh, we are gonna have to be Google Ninjas uh, for the rest of this training. Uh, this exam requires, well really I guess being a good technician and passing this exam both require you to be able to be a Google Ninja and find your own answers. Um, I, I specific, uh, speaking specifically to those who are just starting out, it can be difficult to find your own answers, but uh, those who can find their own answers faster are able to learn much faster. Cisco one gig SFP, and it takes us to this. Uh, it takes us to the data sheets for the one gig SFPs. And so this is where you're going to get all of your product information. And so here you have the different names of all the different standards that you can have at one gig. All right, so here's the table that I really wanted to get to. All right, so if we look at the 1000 base SX, so SX is what I was uh, referencing earlier on the slide. And then if you look at, it specifies the core size and the modal bandwidth of 500 on OM2, you can get up to 550 meters. 
And the same with the other ones that I specified. Here's the LX. You can get up to 10,000 meters, which is 10 km, and all the other ones. All right, so whether or not you're trying to figure out how far a specific transceiver can go, um, or if you are trying to figure out what transceiver you have to get in order to go a specific distance, these are, these are the tables on the data sheets that you have to check. All right, SFP plus for 10 gigabits per second. Uh, so even though it's known as the 10 gigabits per second standard, it actually has 16 gigabits overall throughput. Uh, and, and that goes for all of these standards. The, they're gonna be known as uh, like the one gig, the 10 gig or the 25 gig standard, but there's the total throughput of the, the cables is actually gonna be higher, but a lot of that extra throughput is used for um, encoding and decoding. And the actual practical throughput is what we specified as. All right, so one thing that's interesting is that even though it's known as the 10 gig standard, there's actually 16 gigs of overall throughput that can go through these cables. It's just that the extra is for encoding and decoding. Um, it supports eight gig uh, fiber channel and it supports 10 gig ethernet. And there's also uh, DAX and and it also supports DAX at 10 gigs for up to seven and 10 meters long. And again, we can go and look at the data sheets if we Google uh, Cisco 10 gig module. All right, so here we are on the 10 gig data sheet. All right, so that's what those look like. And it's gonna be just like the one gig data sheet where it gives you information on all the different modules that you can get. It gives you information on how the uh, how fiber optics work shows you the twin axe that you have for 10 gig here's the active optical cables again the 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 pre-attached pre-assembled options it gives you the platform support then it gives you the tables uh, that lets you figure out how far you can get these cables to go so the sfp 28 is the 25 gigabit per second standard why did they call it the 28? Uh, 28 is the actual amount of total throughput on the line. Uh, the extra three gigs is for encoding and decoding. And the people who created it decided to just stick with 28 rather than call it the 25. But it is the 25 gig standard. It supports 25 gigabits per second on Ethernet. And there's actually less crosstalk on the, on the SFP28 than there was on the SFP and the SFP+. Plus. Uh, there are DAC and AOC options as well. And to find the data sheet, we would Google Cisco 25 gig module. Okay, so for this one, you actually have a lot fewer options than you did with the other ones. You've got the, the 25 gig copper cables. And of course, that's another way of saying the twin axe cables. And here we have the, the 25 gig AOCs, which is for fiber. And then there's the 25 gig transceiver modules. All right, so this data sheet's gonna have all of them on there. Again, the pre-attached, that's the copper, that's the AOCs, the blue ones are the AOCs. And then we have the other 25 gig options. And you'll see that when it lists it right there, like 10 and 25 gig, that means that it can go at 10 or 25. And here, this is gonna be our table that we would consult. All right. SFP double D is the 100 gigabit per second standard. So 100 gigabits of overall throughput. Now it does support both 50 and 100 gig ethernet. You can run it at half speed. Uh, this is pretty rare, but it's, it's out there. Uh, and it, it also has the DAC and AOC support for the directly attached modules. And now we are gonna Google uh, Cisco 100 gig module and see what they have. All right, so we've Googled uh, 100 gigabit modules, and this is what we get to. We're only going to look at these first two ones, the, the CFP and then the CPAC. Uh, this one's actually a QSFP options, and, and we're going to look at the, the Qs next. All right, so the CFP, this was the original uh, 100 gig form factor. Now, as you can see, I mean, this is a lot of space taken up for only two ports. Uh, for the most part, this is this is antiquated. It was just the original one. And that's the CFPs. And then the CPACs. Uh, so these ones are a lot newer. Um, let's see here if I can find 
find it. All right, yeah, so these, these, this is what these look like. I mean, these are also pretty big and also very expensive. All right, so that's what those look like. And these are actually a little bit old too. Like if you're gonna deploy new, but for the most part, you probably wouldn't deploy these new anymore either. And when I say that you wouldn't deploy them new, that doesn't mean don't pay attention to them because, or, you know, don't know about them one, because, you know, they will, it's open season for them to be asked about on the test. And there's, uh, they're certainly going to be out there in the wild in data centers when you're working as a technician, if that's what you're going to do. Okay, so now we're going to get to the Q transceivers. So Q means quad. Uh, and basically, it takes like a QSFP is like four SFP. So if SFP meant one gigabits per second, QSFP means four gigabits per second. And likewise, for QSFP plus, that's four times 10 gives you 40 gigs. Uh, QSFP 28 gives you 100 gigs. And QSFP double D would give you 400 gigs. All right, so we're on the, the 40 gig QSFP modules data sheet. So now if you look at these pictures, you can see the, the differences on, on how the, uh, the connectors look on how it would um, link in with the, the cable connectors. And so that's, that's really gonna be the difference between the, uh, the modules on this sheet is what type of connectors are you hooking them to and, and so forth. Okay, so this right here is a breakout cable. Um, so because a QSFP is essentially four SFPs, yeah, thank you, Cisco. Uh, so since a QSFP is essentially four SFPs, uh, you can break them out into four cables that you could put into four different devices or four different ports on one device or, you know, some mixture of that. So here's the direct attached copper cables, which would be the twin ax ones. Um, here's going to be the, the AOCs, the active optical ones, and you can break out with the active optical as well. Here's the non breakout. Okay, yeah, so just one more thing. Um, the, the QSFP slots are significantly bigger than the SFP slots. And if you have a uh, switch that is fitted for the QSFP slots, you can put an adapter into those QSFP slots and then hook an SFP up to it. So if you wanted to have, yeah, you have a 40 gig port that can run at 10 or 40, you get an adapter and then you put the 10 gig SFP plus in there and it will work. And then here's our table that shows us the, uh, the distances and all those specifics. Okay, so here we are on the Cisco 400 gig module data sheet. I just wanna show you guys what these look like. All right, so that's what those look like. You can see that cable there. Here's the AOC for it, which is the active octopus the active op optical cable. And for the most part, they look pretty much the, you know, very similar to the other ones. All right. And uh, so it has pretty much the same tables as all the other ones as well. All right. So backwards compatibility. Uh, basically, you can put um, an older... Uh, SFP or QSFP into a newer slot into a you can put a slower into a higher speed and older into a newer but you can't you can't go in reverse there's not reverse compatibility uh, and the reason would the reason being is that you cannot put a uh, faster uh, transceiver into a slower port and the last thing we're going to go over in this video is the TMG matrix tool now this is an amazing tool that will help you figure everything out so you don't have to continuously pour between data sheets. Okay, so when you Google uh, Cisco TMG matrix, uh, this is what you come to, and uh, it gives you this opening search bar, and let's just put in 400 gigabits per second as the data rate. All right, then it's gonna open up a, a bunch more options here. So if you look on the left-hand side, you can see all the different things that you can filter by. You've got the data rate, You've got the distance that you need to go. You've got the form factor, cable type, transceiver product ID. And then you've got the network device product family. So let's say we wanna do the Nexus 9300 lines and we've already have it filtered for 400 gigs and now it's gonna show us the Nexus 9Ks that are capable of, uh, of doing it. So there's really only 
two Nexus 9300s that can do 400 gigs, and then it's going to show us the, the transceiver that we would have to get and all of the other specifics there. Uh, so if we needed to have 400 gigs that could also go 10 kilometers on it, so you got 400 gigs, a Nexus 9300 and 10 kilometers, and then you know, it would show you it's those same two models, but you would only be able to use uh, a couple of the, the optical transceivers. Another thing, there's two words that you've heard me use, and they're synonymous, which is optic and transceiver or optical transceiver. They're pretty much used interchangeably. But yeah, lastly, I'll just say that when you're putting solutions together in the real world, this tool is invaluable. Most of the time, they'll say, they'll, they'll give you the, the model of switch that they have, and they'll give you, yeah, I need it to be a 100 gig link, and... Uh, you know, you can just put those specs into this tool and it will basically tell you what your options are if you have the options. And um, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous time saver. And the only other thing that I'll also say about this is that for the most part in the real world, you're, you're looking at the hardware and then designing the, the optical solution and, you know, the fiber solution around the hardware that you have in place. Okay, so that wraps up one of the longer videos. The topics we covered were the SFP basics. We looked at multi-mode and single-mode fiber. And then we look at the SFPs, uh, the QSFPs. We talked about backwards compatibility. And then we looked at the TMG matrix. If you found that helpful, just give it a like and subscribe. And I'll see everyone in the next one.